Hello and welcome to episode zero of the Maverick Games podcast. I'm Mike Brown, creative director at Maverick Games, and joining me today is... Fraser Strachan, audio director at Maverick Games. And Tom Butcher, executive producer at Maverick Games. Woo! Feels weird to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I was not briefed on that. <laughs> it would be rude not to. Tom has no idea what the other sound effects are, but maybe we'll discover them through the duration of the show. <laughs> Um, yeah, so guys, we uh, we started a game studio. How about that? We've done it. It's happened. <sighs> what do we do now? <laughs> well, we, obviously, we thought the very first thing you need to do upon founding a game studio is record a podcast. Obviously. Um, because you guys need to be brought along for the journey as well. And that is one of the ways that we might do things a little differently to other developers. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a thing that we should explain because that's probably why you're listening. Um, so the three of us will, it perhaps hasn't escaped your notice, previously worked at Playground Games. Uh, we shipped Forza Horizon 5 at the end of 2021. And I think that left us with you know, many, many good options, really. There was the option to obviously stay at Playground Games and continue with a, a really successful, great studio on a great franchise. Or take a look at some, some other opportunities. Um, I think the opportunity that we, we've taken is incredibly exciting. Um, we've... We've been given a, a lot of leeway to do something really, really spectacular and really special with this game studio. And it was in the realms of opportunities that are too good to miss, really. And I think that, um, you know, we're really, really excited for where this Maverick Games journey is going to take us. Um, guys? Yeah, so it's kind of surreal. Like, you know, I've been in games for like 17 years. Uh, I've never worked to the studio as small as small as one or two or three or four people that we had um, we had just a few weeks ago. So that that's been really strange and exciting. What did what did you do on day one? Uh, we walked into the room. <laughs> we're like, Maverick Games. <laughs> <laughs> Clocked uh, off at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Straight to the pub. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'd love to give you a really exciting story about how um, exciting and energizing day one was. But in reality, um, my ex IT didn't arrive and um, we had to do a lot of HR setup and make sure that all of our IT systems were working correctly. And that was the majority of day one. I really wish there was a cooler story. Yeah, it was very similar to my first day as well. Like you get Outlook downloaded and Teams downloaded and you just go, yep, cool. All right, signed in. Everything's ready to go. Um, all right, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I spend an, a, an un, inordinate amount of time uh, changing my name from Thomas to Tom, <laughs> <laughs> longer than than you than you'd hope for. It's, this is going to bear no uh, impact on the quality of the game we, we're going to make. <laughs> so, <laughs> attention to detail. In case it sounds like we don't know what we're doing, that's <laughs> a, a day spent doing IT and HR setup is a day well spent in the context of a, exactly. a, a it's new, good foundation. It's good foundation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I guess a, a little about our studio and what, what makes us different. So um, we are a studio um, with with innovation at the core of what we do, um, and we are building an environment and a culture that um, encourages innovation, but actually, hopefully, kind of forces it as much as you can force creativity, which any creative will tell you that you can't. Um, but it's an environment that allows that to happen freely, that encourages people to take risks, that encourages people to try new things and go with your gut and do dif do things a little bit differently. And um, hopefully, it's an environment that's going to produce some really, really exciting games because the team we've got already is absolutely outstanding. Um, and the environment that we're building around that team is, I think, really going to allow them to do the best work of their careers. Yeah. I mean, the energy in the room has been amazing so far. Just like all of us just like getting on with the things we want to do. But the discussions have, have been really like creative, as as you've said, and also like quite inspiring as well. Like after, um, I mean, eight and a half years, I was I was in my last job and, and you kind of think, well, I, I, I must have seen everything, but actually, like there was still there was still a lot of discussions we were having that um, we maybe haven't had before, or just we're thinking about things in a different way. Obviously, Maverick Games is different, and we we want to do things differently, and and that that kind of framed up a lot of the conversations. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, it's it, it we're kind of be forcing ourselves to ask the question rather than going, well, how did we do this previously? Well, I guess we'll just do it like that because it's, it's easy. <laughs> Instead, asking us, but why did we do it that way? And often the reason is either arbitrary, it just was, or it's a reason that's expired. It was a one-off reason. It was a reason that existed in 
2016 that doesn't exist today. And when you approach every thing like that, and you're not just taking things for granted, and not just taking things the way that they've always been, it allows you to really start opening doors really quickly in the way that we are building games. Um, it's like I say, it's really, really exciting. Every day is so energizing at the moment. Mm. I, I think that's really helped. To like, having, we've also got a few people uh, who aren't from Playground Games, and that has um, that's been a nice like foil to kind of take <laughs> take a look at what what we've done previously and um, how can we improve it, how can we change it, why would we change it, that that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we should make that a, po a promise to viewers that future episodes of this podcast will feature people that aren't from Project <laughs> Games. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, I have a, a brief itinerary of things that we should cover during the show. The next one is, guys, what games have you been playing lately? Oh, uh, I'll go first. Uh, so I, I played a few. I think my, my favorite one that I've uh, finished uh, just before Christmas was Somerville, which is... Um, for me, the kind of perfect, perfect kind of gaming experience because it's it was only like three, four hours maybe tops on um, Game Pass as well. On Game Pass as well. Um, you see, this we, we don't thing? need to plug that anymore. Oh, <laughs> Game Pass is still great. <laughs> uh, there are other options available, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it start to finish. It felt like just um, you know you play some games and you feel like the first few hours are polished, and then there's a hundred hours of content that you just kind of. Go on, I don't really know what I'm doing. Somerville felt like it had been thought about from start to finish and it felt polished all the way through. And I, I ended it just going like, wow, that, that was just incredible. Um, some other games I've bounced off of pretty hard. Um, not because they're bad, just not really the kind of games that I, I like to play. Like Pentiment was was one of those games that was kind of hot topic um, just before the, the end of last year. Jumped into it. Looked beautiful. Um, it's probably the only game I've actually fallen asleep and uh, woken up having dropped the pad well, on the floor. That's a selling point for some people. Well, the thing is, like, <laughs> I, I think it's because because I'm an audio designer and it's it's all just like farmyard um, ambience. So it's just like it's weird. It's like just being out in the countryside, and then I just like, oh, all oh, so right. Being out in the countryside and hearing farm animals makes you fall asleep. <laughs> um, you, you'll be amazed the things you'll find out about me on this podcast. <laughs> What have you been playing, Tom? I have been playing uh, the, the very, um, I, not new, but um, I guess I've just finally got around to it. It's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, um, which I've had a great time with. Um, I finished it, just to be clear. Um, starring the excellent John, John McLaren, excellently named as well, who we uh, met at Ready for the First uh, name drop at the BAFTA. Yeah, yeah. The BAFTAs. Yeah. For, um, good, good, good friend of Maverick Games, I guess. Yeah, yeah, friend of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't know we exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it, what was was really cool about that game was um, it just did so much, so many different things in the narrative space that I didn't think uh, anyone had done previously or has done since. Um, and I'd, I'd love them to get a second run at a, a sequel because. Yeah. I think they could just polish off the rough edges um, and maybe just focus in on uh, what made the first game so cool. Yeah. So that 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 was great. The caliber of the cast and performances in that game are among the best there's ever been. I think totally That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and they didn't suffer from that problem of um, oh, it's not it's not the voices from the movies. It's not mm. they don't look like the people from the movies. Yeah, um, it's interesting because it came out not too far away from uh, Marvel's Avengers, mm -hmm. um, which it got criticised for that. That yeah, reason, exactly. Yeah. So, similar, similar production values. Um, similar, you know. I'm sure the, the actors were just as good, um, but s somehow didn't quite land it. That combination of script, performance, actor didn't quite land. Whereas the Guardians of the Galaxy just felt totally natural. Like, yeah. you know, that's not Dave Bautista as Drax, but nevertheless, just totally worked. It right didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. It's really yeah. good. Uh, so that was a really good time. I also played Return uh, to Monkey Island, nice. um, which. Uh, the the closest bit of um, media that I can think it, think of a comparison for is uh, Force Awakens. The reason I say that is because uh, it just like hit all the um, like the fan service high notes. Um, like if you played the previous Monkey Islands, you just got loads out of it. It was just constantly referencing itself. Um, and yeah, it's really funny and yeah. has that Lucas connection as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, I didn't G think of that. Gilbert yeah, will, yeah. will know yeah. Lucas. So yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that proximity to Lucas to kind of rubbed off. And, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, so that was great. It was very funny, and I played Spider Man, which people probably aren't interested in hearing, but it was that was great time. Um, With the first one or the Miles Morales? The first one. Haven't got to that one yet. Yeah. Just gonna have a breather before I play that now. Just a bit of a palate cleanser. <laughs> I hear it's quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that as well. Um, again, loads of really cool things narratively that I think it did really well. Like the world, it felt like the world changed in in really meaningful ways uh, throughout the game. Um, I was kind of worried that little um, melody it plays when you're swinging through the city was going to continue through the game, but they changed that up. They're like three <laughs> different versions of it, so um, good, good for them. Um, a swinging around was super fun, That's which so is, good. yeah, that yeah, is right. that is like the secret sauce for that game. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just that, re that, that, it's really, I mean, it's, Hard to do, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to approach that challenge of being able to recreate the the move set of Spider Man, had is... like ten games to get it right. So <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, I'm joking. Well, that was good on well, the. It's not hard in that ten games. No, I, no, okay, that's fair. I, that, they just smashed it first time. But do you remember the 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 older one, the one that came out around about the time of Spider Man Two? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it was called Spider Man Two, I believe. Yeah, Spider Man Two. Yeah. <laughs> How did they uh, name that? Really? Uh, <laughs> they got the swinging mechanic. Uh, done, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's it didn't have all the wall you... runs and stuff, did it? And the wall runs. And flips, I yeah. think, which really like give it a real filmic feel. Um, I feel like in my brain, I'm like, that was amazing. If we went back to play it now, we'd be like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, because the previous game you would have played would have been Spider Man on PS1, which yeah. Um, yeah. was somewhat limited by comparison. Yeah. But um, no, I think the moveset, I think the the scope it gives you to kind of mm -hmm. express yourself within the mechanics of the game is, is fantastic in Spider Man. I, I, I love Spider Man. It's one of my, yeah, you don't my have those, um, you don't have those awkward moments where you're doing something that is very much not Spider Man like and you're just like, maybe you're you'll land and you'll just suddenly start walking or it, it, that just didn't happen. It's like, it just transitions into like a cool landing pose or, or something like that. So mm. you always felt like you were Spider-Man. Mm. 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 So yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll reveal mine as well. So uh, I have been, I've been playing a couple of games. So one of them is Rubber Bandits, uh, also available on Xbox Game Pass. Not that we need to keep plugging <laughs> that every few minutes. Um, yeah, so have you guys played Rubber Bandits? Yeah, it's, mm. it complete. It, it, I discovered it through the discovery page on Game Pass, and I was like, "Oh, I've never seen that. What is that? It's by uh, Flashbulb Games. It's um, it feels a little bit like Gang Beasts. The movements a bit Gang Beasts. See, the the, the the guys are like little characters that are made of rubber, um, and it's a four player multi local or online multiplayer. Although I've been playing it four player local, which I think is probably where the game's at its best. And it has a, ser a series of different mini games and challenges that are all loosely based around uh, a bank heist. But you're a bank heist whilst dressed as like a, a rubber banana with like a, a, a bandana <laughs> on. Um, and there's like loads of opportunity to just troll people you're playing with. You can pick up like any any asset in the world and throw it. And loads of them have got like unique behaviors and things like that. So some of them will just like explode on impact or weirdly um, like the, the can of Coke or kind of an unbranded soft drink um, is like incredibly accurate. It's like if you throw the kind of Coke anywhere in the map, it'll just ding someone on the head and knock them down. <laughs> um, and it has many games where it's like get in the vault, get the money, escape, and which is in terms of the game mechanics, what you have to do, extremely simple. But because you're playing with people on the sofa, the, the opportunity to absolutely ruin it for everybody and say, like, no, don't press a button, don't press a button, don't press a button. <laughs> <laughs> it's like alarm, alarms go off, door slam shut. Um, yeah, really, really fun game and completely passed me by. So I would highly recommend it, especially if you've got local people to play it with. Um, other game I've been playing is Sports Story, um, sequel to Golf Story. I never played Golf Story, but I heard loads of people say it was really good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I can only assume that Golf Story is better than Sports Story. Uh, Sports Story is it's it's a one of it's a game. It hasn't got a map, so to speak. It doesn't have any like internal like log of what you've done or seen. Um, but yet the entire game is meet people. They'll say, "I need a blue scone." And you're like, "All oh, right, okay, you need to get a blue scone." And you'll meet like twelve people that have all touched different things in need, and then you'll find the item. And the only mechanic you have to like remember what person you had to take item back to is, is your brain um, or a notepad, I guess I could have used. But it just, it, the, the entire game becomes this really like mind map of this entire game's open world and remembering where everybody was and what it was they asked me for so that I can go back to them and kind of progress the story. And um, it's really hard. It's like, it's it's just a game that has me, to think, I, I feel like I have to really session it because obviously it's much easier to remember everything that's said to me if, if it's on the same day. Whereas if I sleep or, you know, do anything else and then come back to it, then I find the thing, oh yeah, I needed that. But the person that I got to give it to could be literally anywhere in the entire game. <laughs> it's, it's so weird to say you, you felt like you could have had a notepad, like, because there are games that uh, they're very much designed around like having a notepad with you, like 
The Witness or uh, Return of the Oberdin, mm. that kind of cerebral experience. I don't uh, think Sports and... Story is supposed to be that, though. Um, <laughs> It reminded Perhaps me of those not. DS Zelda games where there was, they had an in-game map where you could write notes yeah. on it and stuff, which is obviously a really smart mechanic. Whereas on this, I, feel, I really feel like you could have just done with a, a little, the character that says in-game, oh yeah, I need to take that back to the man at the beach. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't. And instead, instead, you're just retracing your steps for hours on end trying to find the thing that you can go and give the thing to. And then they go, oh, thanks for that. Here's a pound. And you're like, great. Didn't, that, <laughs> that one wasn't one of the ones that progressed the story. Great. I had no way of knowing that. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been playing. Sports story haven't got to the end yet, so I'll let you know. What, I'll let you, maybe the maybe the narrative carries it through. Um, Golf story was really good. It was yeah, genuinely really funny. Yeah, kind of a kind of not what I expected going into it. I think um, having researched nothing on it and just having heard some people say the golf story was good, so maybe that's on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so that's it about what we've been playing. I guess we should probably talk about Maverick Games a little, given that that's uh, why you've tuned in. Um, thank you, Fraser. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so our kind of our kind of tagline for the studio, and we'll probably come up with a better name than tagline at some point, is uh, be inspired, be creative, be innovative, be a maverick. And there is an element of call to action for that because at the phase of the business that we're at, we are recruiting big time and we are looking to try and bring people in. Um, but that tagline is actually like really important to us, isn't it? It's really important to our values. And um, we should probably kind of give a little a little narrative around what that means. So be inspired is it's sort of like our promise to the people who who join Maverick Games that the the world class leadership team that's currently in place will uh, will will provide you with something. We'll, we will provide you with with fulfillment, with inspiration. We're gonna we're gonna big you up every single day so that you're inspired to do your very best work. Um, which is where we get to the next line, which is be creative. Um, and that's about anyone who's doing their work and ultimately making video games is unfortunately work, um, is given the latitude to be creative within that space, to really express themselves in the work that they do and to always try and lean on the creative side of work, even when it's not an obviously creative task, because I think that's where people find the most fulfillment. That's where people will feel excited to come into work. That's where people will feel satisfied at the end of the day when they've been able to bring their problem solving, they've been able to bring their creative spirit to their work in a way that gives them expression within that. And the final point of be innovative is almost the, the combination of those two. We've built an environment where people are encouraged to complete their work in a way that's fulfilling, that's creative. And we've built an environment where there's a leadership team in, in place that are going to inspire people on the team. And hopefully what that leads to um, is an environment of innovation, uh, an environment where people are encouraged to to try new things, to take risks, to do the stuff that's never been done before, to push push video games forwards as a medium. And there is some secret source to that that we actually can't talk about um, yet, at least, which should really, really help that innovation to flourish and really help um, people who join this team to do things that perhaps they didn't even think they were capable of. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit about our values and uh, culture, guys. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I think we, so. So when we were we were talking about what uh, what like the, the tagline, as you say, for Maverick Games is going to be, I think um, it we went through like a couple of iterations during that that like brainstorming phase, but actually, I f I felt like we landed on this pretty quickly, and yeah, I think yeah. It, it's it, everyone that was in that room just it's like that's it. That's it. We've got it. Um, and yeah, I, I I couldn't be happier with the way that uh, like I think represents all our feelings towards towards the studio and and the output. Hopefully, that's um, that's going to come out of that. Because that you, you know, although we it's it's about inspiring and um, creating that innovation within the people that are working at Maverick Games, but ultimately that. You know, from a player's point of view, that comes out in the the games they're going to be playing. Mm -hmm. so. And it was kind of meant as a way to hold ourselves accountable as well, mm -hmm. so that um, you know, it's always kind of a metric or a barometer of of like, do you feel inspired? Do you feel creative? Do you feel like you can innovate in this in this space? And it kind of can be applied to lots of different facets of of the work and and the job and um, and hopefully the games as well that we make. And and I think. Once we get into the habit of thinking of of those three sort of um, mantras, I guess you could call them, then I think I think we'll hold ourselves accountable to to be a consistently creative place to work. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I guess the other part of our culture, which we should definitely mention, um, because otherwise uh, Harinder will tell us off. Harinder is our COO, by the way, um, is that you know this is going to be the, the best place to work. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that the, the, with, with sec- second to none, our goal is that um, this is the, the very best game studio in the world to work at in terms of job enjoyment, in terms of fulfillment, in terms of your the spring in your step as you walk in the office in the morning. Um, we are grabbing that bull by the horns and literally going for it because um, I I feel like that's the way that you unlock the real performance from people. That's the way that you unlock the real capabilities of people. Our industry has done it a different way for a long time um, and has achieved results out of people and it's worked, right? People make great games. Um, but we've kind of all accepted as an industry that we're not going to carry on doing it that way. Uh, we need to do it a different way. And I think that we are going to, we're going to kind of race to the end of that and um, You're talking about free breakfast, right? Free breakfast. <laughs> the, the pre- we're going to get the premium marmalade. <laughs> um, I, I'm talking about a place where people just feel like they're, they're happy to be at work. They feel like this is a company that they love working for. Um, and hopefully to the point where, you know, it's they're, they're able to really have that creative expression within the workplace. Because, um, and I guess if you listen to this and you're not actually working in the games industry, um, the thing that is relevant to you in that is that it's my firm belief that if you build an environment like that where people are engaged, energized, inspired to come to work, then the work they're going to do is going to be incredible. They're going to do the best work of their careers in an environment like that. Um, and obviously the best work of their careers is going to lead to an amazing game. That is that is the the spirit of Maverick Games, and that's what we firmly believe in. And uh, so far it's going pretty good. So um, I would say that... Um, yeah, it's going to be a little while before we have a game to show on on this podcast, and I doubt this is probably the platform we'll choose to announce it. But um, we will talk about the game, we'll talk about development, we'll talk about the things that we're doing, and we'll keep you updated on whether or not this philosophy is working or not. Um, it's going well so far, so I feel like we're in, in, a, in a really good place. All right, next in the itinerary, we had... Um, so we should aim to cover an industry topic. Mm. And Tom, you suggested starting a new video game studio, which I thought was quite to- yeah. topical. Yes, yeah. And, and we, we're very much um, finding out about that for ourselves, as, <laughs> as, as not as someone who's uh, started the studio ourselves. Um, we, we do have people that were at Playground Games um, from the offset. So I, I think it would be interesting in, in this area of the podcast or this part of the podcast to talk about something that... You know, show uh, show people outside the industry perhaps as well, like how different aspects are operating. I've got a whole bunch of topics written down for future podcasts as well. Great, great. Um, so yeah, start starting a studio for me. Um, I think, like in any uh, in any creative industry, that blank slate feeling, um, which we which we know from doing a, a video game, but the the logistics and operational side of starting a video game studio. Everything from the name to the the logo, it's like complete blank slate. Uh, and I think in in some aspects that could be quite daunting. Um, but I, I don't know about you guys. I, f- I found it like hugely energizing. Yeah, I've not found yeah, anything yeah. daunting. It's like, I, honestly, there's nothing about this process that has made me nervous at all. I've just been like super excited and thrilled about every single step of it. And um Maybe that, maybe that, maybe that's my personality. Maybe that's, maybe that's who I am. But every every bit of it, I've just been like giddy with excitement to get stuck into it. Even when it is like stuff that you know I've never done before. I've never designed a company logo before, and albeit I didn't actually design this one, we we worked with a <laughs> we worked with another creative to to pull it together. But um, it's it's you know it's, it's it's just been an every single day. It's just been so energizing. We've been finding those. Um, those new challenges that we need to overcome, like things like making sure we've got all the correct social media handles so that we can do an announce for the studio mm-hmm. um, and have all of the appropriate handles on every platform. Um, things like setting the website up, which has been, you know, again, uh, we have been involved in website design before. That's not a completely new thing to us, but it's, right, it's day one. The company doesn't exist yet. What's the information that we need to put on there? Because that list is, sh- that's a short list of information that you need to put on there when it's day one. We don't need to go and give full history of the company. Here's what we've worked on and here's all the games we've made and here's where you can get community support because we haven't got a game out yet, so we don't need to do that. So it's a really tight website that's just like, mm-hmm. what's, our, what's our main challenge at the moment? And if you visit our website, you'll probably work out what our main challenge is at the moment, which is, uh, which is hiring. Uh, we are currently a very small team. And we need to become a very big team in order to achieve our ambitions. Um, and I think that's probably the main, you know, that that starting starting a game studio thing. The main thing that it's really uh, exciting is that number of people we need to bring in. You know, with 
a previous place of employment on any given team, you might have one vacancy that you need to hire for. Whereas now we've got vacancies on every team and, and there are multiple seats on every team. And it's just really fun getting out there, meeting the industry, meeting all of our, our peers, chatting to them, seeing if they, you know, if they want to be a maverick um, and bringing them in. I think, um, I guess this is something that we kind of already dealt with, but it falls under the remit of starting a studio, but it's um, bringing in those leaders for each different department so that you've got real, real security and, and confidence in each of those uh, people like you guys um, and, and the rest of the team at, uh, at Maverick Games. And even even some of the discussions we've had around like how we how we onboard and, and bring those people into Maverick because um, you know we we're hiring for for many different posi- positions across lots of different departments, but you know the culture is a big part of um, of the company and wanting to make sure that uh, you know everyone feels empowered but you know if, if we do it too fast and we do it too uncontrolled then then that might go awry so we've we've had a lot of discussions about how we how we actually control and and make sure that we're being really kind of um open and honest with ourselves to to give give everyone the best onboarding experience possible and, and give everyone the the tools uh, that they need to do the job yeah because it, it, it it's not just that like uh you might think well we need loads of people so we need the maximum volume of people just like a fire hose yeah. of people just coming in. But the rea- realities of that, there's like the mind space of the managers to to onboard those people. There's like IT set up. Um, there was there was definitely a moment at previous place of employment where we had like eight people starting one day and IT were like, just never do that again. That's- <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is, there is all of those considerations to think about, you know, not least where they're sitting and, and that kind of thing. So... Um, yeah, even even that stuff's like just fun to figure out and uh, a kind of a real logical problem to solve. So the the name Maverick Games, the start of the like the top of like the formation of studio. Um, how did how did you guys feel about uh, that that like selecting that name and and then kind of feeling about what it means? Obviously, it led on to you know all the other discussions we've had about the vision, but um, must have been tempting to go the Hideo Kojima route. Brown, Brown Productions. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made this podcast really, really difficult to constantly refer to the name. Yeah, I feel like uh, self titled studios are off the table for somebody with the surname Brown, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so it's it's one of those weird things where I, I mean, right at the very, very start of this whole process, I just had a notebook where I was jotting down all my ideas. And... Um, and obviously, I started thinking, oh, what are we going to call the thing? And the very, very first thing I wrote down on a piece of paper that must have had 200 potential names on it was Maverick Games. Um, it's born out of, um, I mean, obviously, it's a dictionary word that has a, a cool meaning. And it's a, a meaning that I think aligns with the vision that I had for the studio. And um, it's also a word that has many cool connotations. But really, I think the reason I said it, thinking about kind of myself and, and this studio, um, it was it had been in a couple of my uh, performance reviews uh, at a previous employer um not necessarily in a way Shock. that was <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily in a way that was particularly complimentary uh, of myself um, um but it's not a word that is negative really it's a word that it's, it's a word that can be used to mean you know negative things but i don't think it is i don't think it's inherently a bad word and it was out of that that i thought like well i'm gonna own it i'm gonna make it a thing and i wrote it down on the paper and that wasn't like boom done there we go register it um there was a multi-month process where we kind of tried out a bunch of different names and tried a few on for size for a little bit um but we kept coming back to that one it was it's obviously pretty cool sounding um but more than that i think when we start to think about what our values are and the idea of kind of being a place that really fosters innovation and doing things differently and thinking differently it just it's in the name right it's it, it means that all of that is within the name it's of, of what we're going to be um and yeah that's that's kind of how we landed on it and helpfully it wasn't already registered so that was <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking if i dug into some school reports of mine it would be like need to apply himself more games which just doesn't yeah. have that same snappy ring to it <laughs> i wasn't talking about school report no i know, I know. Like, <laughs> never does his homework is always late For some reason and it is never in the first class after lunch never late games always late games would be uh, yeah. <laughs> a great option i don't think you would get funding though <laughs> 
Yeah, and the obviously the logo, um, which you'll all have seen. I think the moment I, I with seeing that final version with the uh, the Maverick Games underneath, it's so cool. It's so cool. So cool. Yeah, it's just as a as a bit of just iconography. It's just so tactile. It's oh. just like you instantly just want to like hold it in your hands because it it kind of it, it simultaneously exists as both a two D thing as you look at it, but it also has like a real three D element to it. So you can kind of imagine it being a must have like a wooden block or a glass block mm -hmm. that you could play with in your hands. Is just a yeah. We kind of we kind of talked about how it's got that kind of impossible shape um, thing to you kind of want. It's like a puzzle that maybe couldn't fit inside itself, um, which kind of goes back to the whole Maverick thing. And mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of has that look. All of us were like, I want that on a t-shirt right now, <laughs> <laughs> which means you probably you probably succeeded. <laughs> That, yeah. that, they're going to be flying off the shelves in that merch store. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to seeing those t-shirts soon. <laughs> um, so then we we have the logo, we have the name of the studio, key parts of forming a new studio. We have a team, albeit too small at the moment to make a game, um, but perfectly formed um, team. Next steps, somewhere to make the game. I thought you were going to say make the game, but yes, you're right. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm, think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, our oh, gaming community, listen to this. You're listening to this, and there's HR, and there's payroll. We've got to get <laughs> yeah, a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, yes, need somewhere to make the game, and where better to make a game than in the heart of Leamington Spa in Warwickshire, Silicon Spa, as some people like to call it. Mm -hmm. We never really like to call it that, but um, yeah, the. The Leamington Games community has just been like absolutely blowing up over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, more and more studios opening, of which we are now one. Um, and it's just become like a, an incredible community, right? It's just it's such a cool place to be where um, anywhere else in the world, if you bumped into somebody and they're like, oh, what do you do? And you're oh, a game designer. Like, oh, well, that's an unusual job. What's that like? In Leamington Spa, you tell someone you're a game designer and they're like, oh, of course, because everyone is. <laughs> like, or you work at Jaguar. Or you, yeah, or you yeah. work at Jaguar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jaguar Land Rover, if you're wondering what the uh, acronym is there. Um, the, the two potential employers uh, in, in this town. But it's, all, it's also the kind of place that everyone has heard of around the world. Uh, like, uh, you, you kind of say, oh, you know, uh, Lemming Spa, you know, Warwick. And it's like, oh, yeah, Shakespeare. Yeah, I know I know that. That's where he's from. Um, so, you, like, not that I'm likening us yeah. to the works of Shakespeare. Maybe yeah. one day. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Shakespeare ever came to Leamington. No, no. Give Given it a few that he died years. before it was yeah. <laughs> founded. <laughs> <laughs> but strapped up on Avon and Warwick, they were, they were rocking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, our final topic was what we're doing right now, um, and well, as at the time of speaking, uh, the 9th of January, uh, we're getting ready to announce the studio because as we record this, nobody knows about it. It hasn't been announced yet, but um, in a few hours at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, um, this studio will be announced to the world, and hopefully you'll have heard about it. Uh, obviously, we don't have complete control of the entire video game news cycle, but as long as nothing else does anything major on the 10th of January, then hopefully you'll hear our news. It'd be weird if people were listening to the podcast but hadn't heard of it. <laughs> like they just I mean, the thing, the thing is, Tom, you'll be able to listen to this podcast in 2026 if you want to. <laughs> That's so, true. Yeah, I think, I think there we do have to call it a wrap because we are... Uh, at closing time for this uh, venue that we've rented and Tom was late to get here so we've run out of time thanks Tom oh wow uh, nice one Tom jeez <laughs> <the best. laughs> oh god it's the wrong one <laughs> oh <laughs> you leave it right till the end <laughs> just bring that on me uh, we could do a different we could do a different ending if you want <laughs> no, no we'll stick with this one that's fine, <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, fine. alright so uh, yeah we'll be back in a few weeks a month or so with a, a second podcast we'll try and get some different people on so you can meet more and more of the Maverick team and we'll let you know how it's getting on and bring you on this journey with us um, thanks very much I guess that's it that's our show see you next time thanks everyone bye bye, bye.